Thank, well, good morning. I want to welcome everyone, everyone to this year's departmental budget hearings. And before I get started, I want to recognize the council members present. We have uh, Bill Pridemore, who's uh, head of the Budget and Finance Committee for the council. Bill, good seeing you. Doug Pardue and uh, Ronnie Stein in the back row, hiding. Um, I also want to introduce uh, Deputy Mayor Greg Hynote and uh, Metro Finance Director Rich Riebling, who will be here with me for every moment of this. And for those who aren't familiar with what we're doing, let me take a moment to talk about the process. Um, each year we meet with the leaders of each Metro Department to discuss their budget needs for the next fiscal year, which begins on July 1st. And I have to present my budget to the recommendations to the Metro Council by May 1st. This is my eighth and final budget, and each year we've asked departments to find areas where they could save money. Some years we've asked for bigger cuts than others. Uh, we've been through the Great Recession uh, since I took office, which uh, made it difficult uh, to increase revenues very much. We actually had one year where revenues declined for the first time in decades. And while we're out of the recession now, our revenue growth has remained uh, moderate, so we'll let our spending, we won't let our spending get out of hand. Uh, we've only increased property taxes once in the past seven years, and I'll just go ahead and get the issue off the table right now. We will not be proposing a property tax increase this year either. Uh, tax increases used to be more common, but the recession has a la had a lasting impact on Metro and many other governments in the way in which they operate. We've learned that we need to be leaner, uh, more efficient, and more nimble, and we've learned how to prioritize our needs and the money that pays for them. Most metro departments uh, during the past seven years have seen their budgets reduced 10 to 15 percent, but we've protected our top priorities, which are education and public safety. There's nothing more important for our city than educating our children and keeping our citizens safe, and we'll take the same approach this year. We've asked each metro department uh, to look at a 3 percent budget reduction scenario and tell us what that would look like. That doesn't mean that every department's budget will be cut the same amount or at all. We've weighed each department's needs on their own merit. This exercise simply helps us to see how expenses can be trimmed. Where we can save money on costs without hurting uh, city services, we'll make the cuts. But we'll protect direct services to citizens. We'll prioritize those services over spending for the internal operations of the government. That's how we've approached the budget every year, and we're not going to stop this year. Our city continues to grow, and the need for government services grows with it. We've worked hard to expand services where they're needed by adding new police precincts, libraries, community centers, greenways, and sidewalks. It's important that our citizens, the people who pay the taxes and allow our government to operate, see the greatest benefit for their dollars. That's our responsibility, and it's one we don't take lightly. On that note, I'm now going to turn it over to Police Chief Steve Anderson and ask him to introduce the staff members who are joining him today. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. I have with me uh, Samir Meg. He's our finance manager. Also uh, behind me, Deputy Chiefs uh, Todd Henry, Brian Johnson, and Damian Huggins. We have the commanders of Marlene Pardue of the West Precinct, Paul Tricky, the South Precinct, Jason Reinbold, the Central Precinct, Michelle Donegan, the Hermitage Precinct, Terrence Graves, the North Precinct, Sebastian Gordine, the uh, Madison Precinct, Kay Loki from the Midtown Hills Precinct, and Lieutenant uh, Doug Vinson representing David Enhoff from the East Precinct. And we also have uh, Captains Hager, Jones, Stevens, Drake, Hickerson, Brandemore, Howie, Alexander, Walburn, and um, uh, Baker with us this morning, and also Kathy Morante, the head of our uh, Office of Professional Accountability. Uh, as you can see, we're a team, and uh, we work together uh, even on budget matters. Certainly my privilege to appear before you this morning to present our budget request for the next fiscal year. Before I do that, I'd like to take a moment just to talk about how the decisions you have made over the past seven and a half years have shaped public safety the public safety landscape in Nashville for many years to come. It was your initiative and support that allowed us to, to expand the number of precincts from six to eight. Constructing and staffing the Mid Madison Precinct and the Midtown Hills Precinct has allowed our police officers across the city to, to work much more closely with families and businesses at the neighborhood level. 
your decision to move the West Precinct and the Central Precinct into those new facilities specifically designed for police operations has allowed our officers to be more efficient and responsive to, to community concerns. Your decision to construct the city's first ever full service DNA crime laboratory will be paying dividends for decades to come. As an example, we know that many burglars are rapid repeat offenders. We believe that having the ready, ready availability of DNA analysis to our investigators will help us not only to solve burglaries that have occurred, but also to prevent many burglaries that have not yet occurred. I am pleased to report that our crime lab underwent inspection in January for international accreditation. We have received a very positive report from the inspectors and, and expect to receive accredited status any, any day now. At that time, our scientists will begin to perform analysis on active and current criminal cases. Earlier this month, Ann Talbert, a 30-year veteran of Crime Laboratory Forensics and Management, was named director of our lab. She is with us this morning, and I know that she's very anxious to begin work on these services and on these active cases, as is her staff. The scientific analysis generated by our lab will greatly enhance the safety of Nashville's families for years to come. Ann has a great team in place. Their expertise and experience allowed us to go the, undergo the accreditation process even before the lab is operational. Ann is seated back here with us. Ann, stand up and, so the mayor knows who to visit when he comes to the lab. You can see it. We're very pleased to have Ann and all of the staff on board, a very experienced uh, group of individuals that I know is going to lead us forward. It was your decision to maintain a fully staffed police department throughout your administration. This has resulted in the graduation of more than seven, 700 officers from 22 recruit classes. Not only have we kept pace with attrition, we have added more than 100 officers during your tenure. This staffing level has allowed our officers to attain an unprecedented level of citizen confidence and cooperation. That confidence and cooperation translates into the 622 neighborhood watch and business groups now supported by the men and women of the police department. This is the highest number ever. These groups are made up of citizens who are actively partnering with us to improve the quality of life and to reduce crime. During 2014, our officers attended 2,110 community meetings all across Davidson County. An important result of your commitment to keep public safety at the top of your priority list is the reduction in the number of victims of major crime by more than 10,000. There were nearly 43,000 major crime incidents reported in Nashville during calendar year 2007. There were approximately 31,000 major crime incidents reported in 2014. The crime of murder last year totaled 41. This is the lowest number in the 52 history of the Metropolitan Government. While you and I agree that even one homicide is one too many, the city as a whole is making significant uh, progress in preventing this violent and often senseless, senseless criminal act. Your attention and focus on domestic violence is also paying dif dividends. Last year there were four domestic-related murders. Only one involved intimate partners. These are the lowest figures since the Domestic Violence Division was created more than 20 years ago. Your decision to make violent, domestic violence investigation and prevention a priority in our city is providing much needed services and interventions to some of national, Nashville citizens that need our help the most. The added resources to the Police Department Domestic Violence Division has enabled detectives to be even more effective in holding the perpetrators of family violence more accountable. Your decision to establish the Gene Crow Advocacy Center for Domestic Violence uh, Victims Seeking Help from Courts is providing a much needed additional measure of assurance that we are serious about ending the cycle of, of domestic violence and abuse. Uh, the latest figures that I saw, Mr. Mayor, is about 80% of the victims uh, that are attending court are making use of this center. On behalf of the men and women of the police department, thank you for your vision and support over these last seven and a half years and for helping us continue to move forward with public safety plans for a constantly growing and evolving Nashville. 
As you know, we are a community-based police department delivering police services at the precinct level. The leadership teams in our eight precincts are committed to public safety and quality of life issues. They are working very hard to build on the successes of the past seven years. As we introduce the commanders are here, uh, uh, let me compliment them again. They are working every day uh, as individual chiefs of police, uh, as I call them, uh, in their respective precincts, uh, working uh, with the public. It is the public confidence and cooperation that puts us where we are today. Now to the budget. The police department has always taken our commitment to financial responsibility very seriously. In carefully analyzing our needs for the upcoming fiscal year, we are asking for a budget increase of $6.6 .6 million. One of the largest items, more than $1.6 million, is to raise the officer staffing level by 22 to a total sworn strength of 1,453. Two of these positions are for school resource officers in our charter schools. We need to ensure that charter schools have the same benefits as traditional public schools. As to the remaining 20 positions, it is our plan to request an increase of 20 officers per year for the next three years, with the, with the expectation of opening the police department's ninth precinct in fiscal year 17. As you know, it takes about 60 officers to open up a new precinct. We propose to bring on those 60 officers over a period of three years so that all will be trained, recruited, and in place when it comes time to open the ninth precinct. While the location of the ninth precinct has not been finalized, it will likely be situated in the southern half of the county. The adding of a new precinct south of the river would necessarily reduce the geographical size of the other precincts, allowing our services to be even closer to the neighborhoods. Mr. Mayor, as you know, the city now owns the old Carl Black Capital Chevrolet property on Murfreesboro Road. On your initiative, it was acquired for public safety purposes. It is our intention to first locate a family justice center on the site, which will house under one roof our domestic violence division, our youth services division, as well as the Nashville Children's Alliance and the Tennessee Department, Department of Children's Services. A family justice center will greatly enhance services to the families confronted with violence by allowing detectives, counselors, and social workers to be together in the same building and coordinate their strategies. While a family justice center would be the first public safety component to open, the property on Murfreesboro Road uh, is expansive and could accommodate a full service precinct in the years ahead. And just as the West Precinct and the Midtown, Pre Midtown Hills Precinct have given their communities a shot in the arm when it comes to economic development around these facilities, we expect the same to take place in the area of Murfreesboro Road and Fessler's Lane as the Family Justice Center is built there. Another, another major line item in our budget is $1.5 million to fund our continuously expanding special events initiative. Nashville is now well known for its special events, including the New Year's Eve Bash, the 4th of July celebration, the Country Music Marathon, Live on the Green, CMA Music Fest, professional and college sporting events, and major concerts. As more and more persons attend these events, additional police officers must be assigned to ensure, to ensure the safety of all. As an example, in the case of the New Year's Eve Bash, the footprint of the, the event had to be expanded by several blocks as the crowd estimates in the days prior to this event rose tremendously. On the night of, event, of the event, it was clear that the additional space was needed. If you build it, they will come. Mr. Mayor, you have built a city where people want to come and they do come by the thousands. Additionally, when it comes to special events, there is now what we know to be the new normal. As we watch disruptive activities take place across the country and around the world, some of which are terrorism related, we have increased our staffing at special events, both overtly and covertly, to prevent any disruption here. The special events money we ask for is to staff these events with primarily extra duty officers on overtime so that our service to the neighborhoods with regular duty officers is not disrupted. This program is working. We by necessity, however, we'll have to keep up our staffing numbers to cover additional events and the increased number of visitors attending these events.
In effect, we are a business, as Nashville continues to have an increased number of customers wanting to come here for both business and pleasure and spending their money here, we need to ensure that our staffing levels stay abreast of that customer demand. For the new DNA Crime Laboratory, we are requesting a budget increase of just over $1 million. More than half of that is for the maintenance of very sensitive machinery and the purchase of essential chemicals and lab supplies. Another portion of the request is to upgrade 10 forensic technician positions so that we remain consistent and competitive with other area crime operations such as the TBIs. We are requesting an additional $291,000 to hire more part-time school crossing guards so that we can cover both the new public and charter schools that will open in, the, uh, in this next fiscal year. Many citizens don't realize that the 200 part-time school crossing guards across Nashville are actually police department employees. They are an essential element to our public safety mission. Our request contains a $600 request for secondary employment. Note that this line item is budget neutral. We anticipate an increase in demand for the services of off-duty police officers by area businesses. The increase in billable hours, these funds being paid into the Metro General Funds, will offset the requested additional funding request. And in keeping with the police departments and the metropolitan government's commitment to increase diversity in the workforce, we are requesting an additional $6,000 to reclassify one of our employees to serve as a diversity coordinator. That person's mission will be to interact with the community and faith-based organizations to increase diversity in both the, the sworn and civilian police department, within uh, sworn and civilian positions within the police department. Our budget request also includes $195,000 for salary and fringe benefits relating to the hiring of two additional police crisis counselors. On occasion, police officers encounter horrible scenes and circumstances as a part of their jobs. For years, we've been able to provide the much needed debriefing and counseling services. Over the past few years, I'm pleased that our officers are taking advantage of these services in increased numbers. The mental health of our police officers is very important. We need to add two additional counselors in order to keep pace with the increased demands for services. This additional money will also cover the increased cost of psychological examinations for applicants seeking to be police officers. We're also asking for increases to cover the higher cost of ammunition, the required maintenance and software licensing for our computer systems, and the purchase of software that allow, allows for the more consistent performance evaluations of the new police officers who have just graduated from the academy. Mr. Mayor, it's because of your priorities and your support through your two terms along with the backing of the Metro Council, the, our city's clergy, and Nashville citizens that I can say to you and to our citizens that public safety in Nashville is in the right place. And just as important, the stage is set to con continue us onward in the right direction over the next years. As historians write about Nashville in the future, the chapters re recording your legacy will note that your commitment to public safety was instrumental in making Nashville a place where businesses want to locate and where people want to live. It has been my privilege to serve the city during your tenure. Thank you for all that you have done to ensure that the police department has had the resources we need to effectively serve the public. We look forward to building on our successes as we go forward. I too believe that Nashville's best days are still ahead. With that, Mr. Mayor, we'd be pleased to take any questions. Great, well thank you and um, thank you all for, for being here today. Um, can you talk a little bit about the the crime lab and can you be any more specific about when you expect the accreditation or how that process is going? We're waiting on, on the uh, the accreditation commission uh, to actually issue uh, the document, but we expect it uh, in very short order. Uh, the inspection, uh, uh, we are one of the few labs that was able to, uh, that have been able to go undergo the accreditation process uh, before it was even operational. So uh, as we said, we're waiting, uh, the, uh, the personnel there are practicing their trade and we will start active cases uh, we hope sometime uh, this month or the first of next month and you have 
all the personnel there now you need to get fully up and running? We have the, the personnel that we plan to open with, yes. We have all of the uh, department heads uh, in each of the sciences. And uh, as we go forward, we'll be adding additional scientists. But right now, we have what we need to open and open effectively. Okay. You also are requesting, um, I guess, 10 and a half uh, employees for crossing guards. Can you tell me how you determine what crossing guards are needed for the upcoming year or the numbers? Well, in our traffic section, uh, we, we have a supervisor uh, that's uh, assigned supervision uh, duties uh, uh, for the school crossing uh, personnel. And, and, and we have, uh, uh, within the uh, operation itself, we have supervisors. But uh, as the need arises and as we get requests, as, as comments come to us, uh, they survey the traffic patterns at the schools and make determination whether we need uh, once, uh, whether there's a crossing guard needed at all, or whether we need whether uh, one or whether we need two. So, uh, uh, not all schools have crossing guards, uh, but uh, those are schools where that uh, the, the traffic patterns indicate that, that none is needed. And then you referenced the Family Justice Center and I guess the location on Murfreesboro Road. And what, what would the, just describe how the Family Justice Center would make Nashville a safer place and how it would impact service to the public? Yeah, maybe one of the first things I would say about that, uh, it would be a one-stop shopping, so to speak, uh, for the people uh, who need our assistance. Uh, but today, as we speak, we have the counselors at the uh, Nashville Children's Alliance uh, interviewing uh, children that uh, uh, suffered uh, sex abuse and child abuse. Uh, we have our Youth Services Division within the police department uh, investigating uh, neglected children and crimes uh, committed by children and crimes committed against children. Uh, we have our Domestic Violence Division, uh, as the name implies, investigating incidents uh, of domestic violence uh, uh, in, within the families. Uh, also, the Department of Children's uh, Services uh, for the state of Tennessee works closely with us, as does the district attorney's office. So uh, this would put all of those people, instead of having to go across town to meet, instead of uh, sending our uh, the victims or the per persons who need our services from place to place, uh, having one place they could go, uh, instead of have calling meetings or driving across town to tend to one particular duty, uh, they would all be under one roof and coordinating their activities. Uh, and more efficiently uh, serve the public. Okay. You've um, asked for a position for diversity coordinator, which to me seems like a, a good idea. What, um, can you tell us what the goal of that position would be, and then can you've been involved, and I thank you for this, with the Diversity Advisory Committee. Can you talk a little bit about how that process is going? I think the committee itself is, uh, is is working very well. I think uh, we've identified uh, some issues that we'll be addressing in the future and, and we'll be bringing to you. I think within the police department, uh, uh, there are many cultures and uh, uh, many uh, diverse communities across Nashville, and uh, we need representation in some manner from, from each in order to uh, effectively serve Nashville. Uh, we can't keep uh, all of Nashville safe unless we can keep all of Nashville safe. So we need to be in in all parts of Nashville and represented there in some manner. So the primary purpose of the diversity coordinator uh, would be uh, recruitment, uh, uh, primarily uh, working with the faith-based communities, uh, working with civic groups, uh, working in the community to uh, encourage uh, persons to apply uh, to our police department uh, from all the diverse communities. And then you've uh, the ninth precinct, which I guess we would like to see up and running in the 2017 area. That, that would be my goal, yes, sir. Right. And that, um, your approach to staffing that is a little bit different than what we've done in the past. I think in the past we've, we've hired new officers, um, well over 100. But uh, when a new precinct's come online, you've basically had to find officers new or otherwise to go into that precinct. And it sounds like you have a goal to sort of systematically over the next couple of years build up the trained, prepared officers to be ready to staff that at the moment it, it opens? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in opening up the last two precincts, the Madison Precinct and the Midtown Hills Precinct, uh, we learned that it was very difficult, one, to recruit uh, 60 new officers in addition to what we needed for for uh, uh, to match attrition, uh, to get them trained, to get them the experience they needed to actually be on the street. So this is a plan to do it in stages uh, so that uh, we don't ask for so much money at one time so that 
the officers are uh, situated and uh, ready to go the, the moment the building is ready. Okay, and the um, this is the, this is the hard question. You've had tremendous success, and the department's had tremendous success. Everybody in the room and outside working for the department. And reducing crime, we've had um, record low homicides two consecutive years, and you know I can think back when I was public defender, we had years such as '98 where there's 112 homicides, and average between 90 and over 100 for many years, and now we're down in the 40s, which is again an unacceptable number, and that's why you take a priority like public safety, and you never check it off and say we got that one done. It's something you constantly pay attention to. But your success has been dramatic, and it's appreciated, and it's been noticed. Um, what do we do need to do to keep it going? Well, I think uh, I need to listen to the people sitting behind me, uh, the people that actually run the police department, uh, that are on the uh, there on the front lines, uh, and specifically the deputy chiefs and the uh, precinct commanders. And we keep uh, working with the community. Uh, we keep dividing Nashville into smaller geographical areas with new precincts. Uh, we keep uh, encouraging that uh, community involvement. Uh, and uh, we continue to hone our skills. And you know, at, at uh, some point, I guess you could argue that we meet, uh, reach a point of diminishing returns. But uh, uh, I think if you attend our ComStat sessions on Friday morning, and, and the public is invited, we encourage the public to be there with us. Uh, you will see that each commander and each component commander uh, is looking at what happened the previous week and seeing how that we can improve on it uh, the next week. So uh, uh, they amaze me at continuing to find and uh, new ways uh, to uh, enhance public safety across Nashville. The issue of um, trust and support and communication with the community has received a lot of national attention this year in particular and or late last year. Um, how does your community, uh, precinct community coordinators help you achieve that goal? Well, that's our first line uh, connection with the community, and each precinct uh, has a community coordinator. We we commonly call that the COCO. Uh, uh, they're very dedicated uh, men and women uh, whose pri whose job is liaison with the community. So they organize community meetings. Uh, they uh, they're at the beck and call of any citizen that uh, asks for information. Can you come to my residence? Can you come to my business and talk to me about public safety issues? Uh, each of the uh, each of the COCOs have uh, uh, email blast. Uh, where that they're gathering up information from across the precinct and making it available to uh, any citizen that, that that wants to participate in our uh, in our crime fight, fighting strategy. So, uh, uh, next to the precinct commanders, uh, they're probably the most important people uh, at each of our precinct. Okay. Richard, you me? two questions, just two follow-up questions um, on the crime lab. Just you know, obviously we made a major investment then made the decision to go forward on that. And so once it becomes accredited in the next hopefully month or so, that's when the evidence can be taken and then used in criminal trials and things of that nature. Is it required, just so the public understands, and I understand it actually, when, when will it be actually of use to the, to the citizens? Uh, Sometimes the end of this month, the first okay. of next month, uh, it, and uh, we made a, a conscious decision not to start the right. processing on active cases until we were accredited. Right. Uh, we could go forward before that, but uh, we have made that decision, okay. and uh, we will start on the active cases at that time. So, so just sort of, so for as a return for those citizens' money, once we get, get accredited, then we're in full operational and be utilizing that lab and not utilizing the TBI lab or anything else at that point? We'll be working closely with the TBI lab, but primarily we'll be using our lab uh, for fingerprint uh, analysis, for DNA analysis, for toxicology, for firearms uh, matching, uh, all the things that we do rely on over the labs uh, at this point. It will be a full service lab. And then the second issue, it relates to the, um, the overtime for special events, because um, I think there's always some confusion about how that is done, handled, and I thought maybe we could clarify it. You know, we did a supplemental this year and, and, and gave the department some additional money because of the, the things you outlined you know, in your remarks about the events growing. And so how, how do you, I mean, how does it determine what sort of big picture how, you know, the, the promoters of those events have some responsibilities to provide security, but obviously we feel from a city safety standpoint that we need to provide some extra level through uh, through um, through police officers. Kind of, it's kind of 
kind of walk through how that all kind of happens. Yeah, that, that, that's all very correct. And then on top of that, uh, we look at it and, 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 and consult uh, with with uh, the persons we need to on whether it's an event that uh, uh, that serves to uh, uh, forward the purposes of Nashville to bring bring economic benefit to Nashville. So uh, we look at it sort of uh, as, as a business would. Uh, the more customers we have, the more staffing you need to service those customers. So uh, public safety is our primary concern. But on the other hand, we want we want to make the events uh, uh, flow as they should so that uh, more and more people are attracted to come to them and spend their money here in Nashville. Thank you. Greg? I just want to say thanks to all of you in the room. Captains, commanders, deputies, thanks. Chief, thank you too. You did a great job. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Very good. Well, um, let me thank you for your strong leadership I think the department has uh, as I tell people all the time that um, you know, there's a lot of things I worry about but I don't worry about how the police department is going to perform you all do extraordinary work and you know we've put a lot of resources in it but the resources have been used wisely and there's been a lot of great leadership and, and vision from the department in terms of how additional resources can be used to make the citizens of Nashville safer and I've seen, um, you know, the results and the community seen the results. It's one of these, it's a good example where if you put, if you target resources, have a determination to try to reduce crime, you can get some results, which is not to say that you're going to be able to achieve the same results year after year after year, but we certainly will try. And uh, the, the results that we've had, and particularly with violent crime, is something I'm, I'm very thankful for. And I understand the, the hard work that goes into making that happen. And I think that um, the quality of people working in the police department is extraordinarily high. Um, you can look at all levels and you look at the folks coming into the police academy, which I think we've, as you've mentioned, we've kept the academy going all the time. There's always a recruit class. There's always new people coming in. I am sure that our department is one of the departments that uh, young people looking for a career in law enforcement consider as a, as a good place to be, a place where they can have a good career. Um, and that attitude of uh, serving the public is, I think, seen everywhere. I hear just tremendous praise wherever I go in the city for the department. And the leadership, uh, I give you tremendous credit for being a calm, steady hand and surrounding yourself with quality people. I've said it, uh, if not 100 times, uh, 200 times, that you, know, you can look at the men and women who are in leadership positions in the department now and you see the future chiefs for as far as the eye can see. I think you see future chiefs uh, for not only Middle Tennessee area, but for around the state, around the southeast, and around the country. I, mean, I think it's that good. You've got an incredibly deep bench which gives me a, a, a real sense of confidence. Um, I'm very proud of uh, the way you've handled yourself. I particularly think, in contrast to probably some other suggestions you got along the road, that uh, the response of the city when there was understandably upset people about the events in Ferguson and the people wanted to express their frustration, exercise their First Amendment rights, the way that was handled here in Nashville speaks volumes to the way you approach your job. I think your involvement with the diversity efforts that the city's doing and asking for a coordinator position is, um, is, 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 is a great idea. Um, I, the work you've done with events is challenging. And that's not going to get any easier. Uh, the city is clearly a very attractive place for folks, and we have a lot of visitors, and a lot of big events will occur here. And hopefully, we'll have any, the biggest event ever uh, this spring if we win the Stanley Cup. Um, so that would be good. I think the uh, you know you all deserve credit too for the um, your response to the. This is probably an important call, but. Well, I won't find out. Um, your response to um, working on the weather situation, I feel like we spent a lot of time on, on weather during my time as mayor, and we just went through a difficult uh, period of about five weeks ago. And the amount of hours put in and hard work is something the city notices and the city appreciates. So just in brief, uh, I am thankful for you all, thankful for your hard work. The city is thankful for what you do, and I am very satisfied with the work of the police department and your continued effort to get better and better and better. Um, good work. 
Thank you very much. And as I meet with uh, other chiefs from other major cities uh, uh, across the nation, uh, I would always return very thankful uh, for the staff that uh, that I have sitting behind me. Uh, there's no other city that has the talent and the dedication uh, of uh, its senior leaders as you do here in Nashville. So thank you for giving us the resources to make this a good police department. Okay. Thank you.